Hello, and today we're looking at how we can apply our knowledge of percentages to answer test questions. And all of the questions we're going to look at today are previous SATS questions. I've just changed them a little bit, so they're not exactly the same, but they are taken from the SATS. So, straightforward one to begin with. 40% of 80 is what? So it's nice and easy. It's a it's a percentage of an amount. So we know 40% of, so of 80. So let's go to my favorite percentage to get to. Let's get to 10%. So you need to think of what would 10% of 80 be? So obviously what we need to do for that is do 80 divided by 10. And that's a nice and easy mental calculation. Obviously the digits jump one place to the right which leaves us with 8. So 10% of 80 is 8. But the question says, what's 40% of 80? So you have to ask yourself, what have I done to 10% to make 40%? Well, obviously, I've multiplied 10% by 4 to make 40%. So whatever I do to the percentage, I also do to the amount. So I need to multiply 8 by 4. And I can do that mentally. 8 times 4 is 32. There we go. There's my first answer. So I'm going to pop that in there. 32. Okay. However, our next part of the question is a little bit different. I've got a missing number here. 40% of something is 80. This time, it's as the question's asking us, what is this 100%? The missing amount is 100% but we don't know what it is. So we're going to need to see if we can calculate it. So, if I remember 40% equals 80, why don't I go again to my favourite percentage? That's right, you've guessed it, we're going to 10%. So I've got to say, what have I done to 40 to get to 10? And obviously, I've divided it by 4. 40 divided by 4 makes 10. So whatever I do to the percentage, I need to do to the amount. So I need to divide 80 by 4. So I, say I can do that mentally if I want. And that is, of course, 20. So now I know what 10% is. But the question asks, what was 100% of this amount? What is the whole amount that we would have started with? We know what 10% is. We want to go to 100%. So thinking about it now, what have I done to 10%? To get to 100%, what I've done to 10 to make 100, yep, I've multiplied it by 10. So I'll do the same to the 20. And of course, 20 multiplied by 10 is 200. We jump the digits one place to the left, and there's my answer, 200. Okay? Notice how in this question, the answer was smaller than the number we started with, because we were looking for the percentage of an amount, whereas in this question, the missing number was larger than the answer because this is the 100% here this 80 is the part, the fraction, the percentage of that amount okay right let's move on so here we have another SATS question and it wants us to work out what percentage of children chose orange so there's orange there that was 15 children so 15 out of 60 children chose orange. Now, this is difficult because that's 60. If only that was 100, it would be easy, but it's not. So we need to think about what fraction 15 is out of 60. And if you want, you can simplify that. So think about how many 15s go into 60. Or you can say, what number goes into both 15 and 60? Actually, 15 goes into both 15 and 60. 15 goes into 15 once. 15 goes into 60 four times. Ah, yes, four 15s make 60. So, can you think of a percentage that is equivalent to one quarter? You think to yourself, if percentages are out of 100, and I know I'm doing fractions here, but fractions and percentages and decimals are all the same thing. They just look different. But, of course... Percentages are always out of 100, they're like a fraction that's always in hundredths. Can you think of an equivalent fraction 
that is a quarter, but it's out of a hundred. So think to yourself, what number goes into a hundred four times? Have you got it? I bet you have, of course it is twenty-five. And twenty-five out of a hundred is of course written as a percentage, like that. Okay? Because when we have a percentage, it's basically saying this fraction is out of a hundred, and the numerator is the amount we have, the percentage we have. So for a question like this, where it's asking you what percentage chose this, and we haven't got an easy number to work with, maybe have a think of it as a fraction, think about equivalent fractions, and think, ah, how can I get that into hundredths? Because that's what we want, we want percentage, it's out of hundredths. Okay, one more question to look at. 50 children went on holiday. 10% of them went to Cornwall, lovely picture of Cornwall there. 50% went to Blackpool, which has gone for the roller coaster. How many more children went to Blackpool than Cornwall? And this is your classic SATs 2 or sometimes even 3 mark question. OK, now the first step we need to do is we need to calculate how many children went to Cornwall. So, that of course is 10% of 50. And if you even use my favourite percentage, 10%. It's a nice and easy, divide 50 by 10 gives us 5 for Cornwall. Let's jot that there. Should be a capital C for Cornwall, really. OK, and then we need to calculate how many went to Blackpool. So 50%, again it's still out of 50, because that's how many children there were. Of course, 50%, nice easy percentage, means half. Half of 50 means we've got 25 for Blackpool. OK, but we're not finished, because the question says, how many more? And on the stats, I might even put that word in bold, I put it in capitals here. How many more children went to Blackpool than Cornwall? How many more means it's asking us to find the difference. And in maths, when it asks you to find the difference, it's asking for a subtraction between the larger number and the smaller number. In this case... That's our 25, and the difference with 5. Nice and easy, you can do this mentally, but I'm writing it down just to, sh just to show you. 25 subtract 5 is, of course, 20 children, I should say 20 more children, went to Blackpool than Cornwall. And that is how we can use our knowledge of percentages to answer test questions. Good luck, see you next time.